Good Vibe Nation. It's your boy G. I'm Aries, y'all. And we back with another video. I'm singing for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, we missed y'all. What's good? What's going on, fam? Y'all, we got a good video for y'all today. We doing a little Q&A. If you fool with us, you would know that we posted some stuff in our community asking for y'all to send us some questions so we can answer your questions. And y'all sent some really good questions. Really, really good questions. So shout out to everybody who dropped them comments on that community post and helped us create this video that we about to give y'all. This was for you. I've got the questions right here in my phone. <laughs> I've got all the questions. When you hear your question, just pat yourself on the back because you sent in an awesome question. You know what I'm saying? We about to get into these questions right now. So let's jump into these questions. Multiple people sent in this question. What made you start YouTube? What is your vision for it slash your family in the long run? And individually, what do you want to see come out of it? Y'all so deep. <laughs> I'm not that deep. It's not that deep for me. But it is for me. <laughs> This is how I think, this is how my brain operates. I'm thinking about the future. Great question, and I have a great answer for you, but I'm gonna defer to my wife and allow her to go first. But I think the reason why we started YouTube is a question for you to answer because, <laughs> I mean, it was really your brainchild. Like, I feel like people have mentioned it to us in passing years before, and it was never something I wanted to do because I, don't, I just, y'all yeah, know, I don't really like to put myself out there like that. I'm on here now and I'm comfortable with y'all, but I would never want to do this by myself. I, I, I get that. I totally understand that. So I'm going to tell y'all, when I first met Aries, you see this woman. She's beautiful. She's glamorous, like that Fergie song. She always loved makeup. So I used to be like, she watched makeup videos. I used to be like, yo, put yourself on YouTube. Do a makeup channel. But she didn't, you know, she didn't really see that vision for herself. That's not for me, y'all. But me... I always wanted to be on the real world. I always wanted to be in front of the camera. Aries and I would be going out and people would be like, oh my God, y'all are such a beautiful couple. Your kids are so beautiful. And then my sister started telling me, y'all got a YouTube family. Jump on YouTube. And we waited and we waited probably like two years. And then we finally just did it. You were scared, huh? You took the plunge. Yeah, that's why we started. The vision I see for this YouTube is the vision that God has for it. Like I can't really see where we're going to go. Right, It's. I feel like it's not really for us to say where it's gonna go. Exactly. Like it's, it's not for us to say like we can't really determine. We could just put out the best content that we can make and pray that we're doing it the way he wants us to do it and go from there. I, that's how exactly. We Cause I have self doubt y'all. Like I know these videos be dope. I know that part, but like, I don't know if y'all know that they this dope. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like seriously, I mean, just keeping it 100. Like I'm confident in the material that we put out, but I don't know if everybody is going to catch on. Like, are we worthy of that level of celebrity or I don't even want to be a celebrity. No. Like to be honest, we we're not doing this to be celebrities. Cause I don't, I don't need that kind of pressure. I don't yeah. need, I don't need it. I yeah. don't like yeah. to live a regular life. Exactly. Y'all, seriously, we doing this so that we can get new carpet in our house and like get a new roof and like send our kids to private school. You know really? what I'm saying? Really? So that is the, that is the end game for <laughs> this to be a springboard, a stepping stone for us to get into other ventures, other exactly. sources of income so that we can attain not just riches, but like well for our family so like our kids will have something that is their own like we can establish something that we can pass down to our kids exactly and last part how we see it for the family people i mean you all see our kids they're really super personalities right they're they're like the future so like people have told us to create a youtube for them right i don't know about that y'all and see that's the thing like so we don't really know how like y'all see them when they're on the camera with us but we don't just focus on them as like the focal point of a video. I feel like they're they're too young. They're too young. I don't want to put that pressure on them to make them feel like they have to like perform live like, up to something. They're they're babies and exactly. they are my babies and I don't play those games. We're not going to do that to my babies. So when they get to an age to where they can say, I want to be on the camera, which I think Brave will be the first one to say that, they'll be able to take the reins and let us know what they want to do themselves. Great question, great question. Hope you like the answer. <laughs>
this is kind of related. What is your dream job? My dream right now would be to have independence from YouTube. Like I like doing what we do with YouTube. Like I like the freedom of shooting videos and releasing them for y'all. And so like that right now is my current dream job. I, I, I agree. I think my dream job is anything where I can be creative on my own terms. Like when I feel like I feel a spark of inspiration and I want to create something and put it out, I can do it. And I don't have anybody breathing down my neck like, you got to get this done on this day. And like, I don't, I don't like it. Yeah. I want to move when I feel like moving. And then it might not be something that you're super passionate about. So it's, it's like you never really feel fulfilled if you're not living in your true purpose. Even if it is your passion, if somebody is telling you when and how to do it, it's taking, it's taking like the joy out of it. Like you want to create when you are moved to do so. Exactly. Have you ever been so angry with each other that one of you slept on the couch for one or more days? <laughs> Even when I am upset with him, we still sleep in the same bed. We, I just turn my back to him. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I was like, <laughs> y'all, like, I'll be on one edge. She'll be all the way over here. It ain't no feet touching. Like, don't. No skin. No skin on skin. If you sneeze, nigga, no blessing. <laughs> I'm not blessing you. <laughs> So that's pretty much all it'd be. It'd be the in the same bed with the back big space, actually. If you ever try to sleep on the couch for it, multiple days, I'm leaving you. I, just don't <laughs> leave you ever. I don't care. Come get your black ass in this bed. <laughs> But that's a good thing, y'all. Like, our temperament is low. So we don't be trying to fight like that. I mean, disagreements, we have them. You gonna sleep in this bed. <laughs> so keeping in with that thing, when you argue, who usually wins? I, I will say this. I define arguing as, like, voices raised, like, a heated argument. And we don't do that. Like yelling. Yeah, and yeah. Maybe maybe cursing. Yeah, no. I have done that. And I told myself that I don't like that. That's volatile. So we do not do that. We have disagreements. And a lot of times, I am the one who's apologizing. <laughs> not all the time. A lot of times, <laughs> I am the one who's apologizing. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to be, ladies. Okay? They're always wrong. <laughs> Even when they're right, they still have to apologize. Oh my God. I think, though, that lately... Can we get personal? Just a little bit? Yeah, let's get personal. That most of our disagreements lately revolve around YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not good, y'all. And usually, I would say he wins those arguments because he has valid points about my... Work <laughs> ethic. <laughs> or lack thereof. <laughs> no, we just work, we just work differently. Yeah, we it's work not that differently. We work differently. Yeah, I will. She, Aries is... I'm more laid back in my approach. And I'm more intense, y'all. I have been called Diddy. Diddy and I are both Scorpios, and I admire they're, Diddy. They're so bossy, and they always want to take over everything. <laughs> everything. I'll wear that hat. I'll wear that. I'll wear that. Okay? Like, I just because you don't see me doing anything doesn't mean I'm not doing it. Like, that's what I had to tell. Like, I'm, I'm all up here. All my stuff's up here. <laughs> it's going to come out eventually, but for now, it's up here. Okay? I'm a cancer. That's how I work. It's, it's up here. Oh, my God. <laughs> You'll see it one day. <laughs> What are your favorite and least favorite qualities about each other? <laughs> so, I mean, up until yesterday, because we <laughs> we were looking at these questions. So, like, I would have had to say how we work. Like, she works differently from me. And not that you're supposed to be me. But, like, I expect certain things. And, like, we're trying to reach certain levels. And the only way we're going to get there is if we go crazy. But she had to let me know yesterday that she works differently from me. Like, she says she's all up here. And I'm more, like, getting it out. And I like to plan and execute and have a plan before we get into it. And, like, she probably already knows you the plan. You want to plan for the plan. Exactly. <laughs> and she might. I can't work like that. Like, I can't work like that. I'm just more of a go with the flow, like a adaptable type of person. Yeah. Like I just, yeah. things have to come to me. Like as things come to me, like that's when I. She's like impromptu. Yeah. But like she said that sometimes she maps out things. But I don't know that because she hasn't voiced that to me. I don't so. tell. <laughs> I have a whole, it's all worked out in my head. 
but he doesn't know. So that's your least favorite thing about me. What's your favorite? Man, y'all, I have I have been with a few women who were volatile and like, you stupid mother effer and da 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 and I'm not just gonna let anybody talk to me like that. So then I go crazy too. So my favorite quality about you is that I always say it like you have like you you have like a sweet spirit, like a soft spirit. If if I'm getting hyped, like if somebody pisses me off, y'all, and I'm going crazy, she'll be like, Greg, like calm down a little bit so like she doesn't even like go to that octave go to that level so i love that about you because i don't have to go there because you don't go there so what about me i want the favorite first i think that my favorite and least favorite is the same thing like your your level of ambition <laughs> like I feel like your ambition is why like our family is always like there is the sky is the limit for us like Aww. I believe when you say you're gonna do something like he's gonna do it like everything he says he does I believe what he says but in the same token like that ambition sometimes the pressure that he feels on himself sometimes that pressure comes on to me yeah and I don't like that <laughs> uh, I didn't ask for it I don't want it you can keep that <laughs> And like Greg is the kind of person who expects people to do and handle things the way that he does and handles things. And I have to tell him sometimes, like, I'm not you. I'm not going to move the way you move. Like, we're two different people. So you can't expect certain things from me because we're different. Yeah. So I your ambition, that. it's a blessing and a curse. Yeah, I accept that. I just want y'all to know that y'all are coming with that fire. Okay, these questions <laughs> are... Y'all did that. Super. How important is non-sexual affection in a marriage? I'm going to let you, you want to answer that first? Well, for me, it's very important because one of my love languages is like physical touch. Like, I feel like we can't go a whole day without having that connection. Like you hug me or you like you just touch me some kind of way that's not sexual. And then when the night comes, we're in the bed and you're like, I want some. Please me. Baby. It don't work like that for me. <laughs> like, I haven't been connected to you all day. So, like, I need, like, the hugs and the kisses throughout the day. And, like, I, like, you know, um, massage my scalp or something. Like, rub my feet. Like, I need all of that. That's my love language. <laughs> and as a dude, it's important to keep a woman happy. <laughs> what? <laughs> I do. I'm just being honest. Like, I think that those types of things, like, just like you said, like, telling your woman that she's beautiful during the day or, like, making her laugh or, like, trying to, like, have a connection with her that, like you said, does not involve sexual innuendos or sexual contact is important for a woman. Men and women are different. But, like, I think... You, uh, as a man, just like I said, you have to consciously know what your woman needs and be able to tap into that if you want to have a happy marriage. And it's got to be a give and take, okay? Yeah. It's got to be a give and take. Like, you got to meet in the middle. Exactly. Like, meet in the middle. <laughs> meet me in the middle. Next up, dream vacation spot and with or without the kids. First of all, if I'm going on a dream vacation it's not a dream if my kids aren't there. Oh, that's right. It's not a dream I'm if my kids aren't there. Like, my kids got to be there. Like, I want them to experience what I experience. Absolutely. If I'm going to a new place that I've never been, I want them to see it. Exactly. My top two places that I would want to go to are the Amalfi Coast, which is right off the coast of Italy, or Mykonos, which is Greece. And he stole that from me, so that's my answer. I want to go to Greece. I want to go to Egypt. Yeah. I don't know if that would be like a vacation though, like in the sense that I think of a vacation, but like I want to visit Egypt and like yeah. sightsee and like just learn pyramids all about and all that Egyptian culture. Like, yeah, I've always loved it. Yeah, with the kids though, they got to be there with the kids, no matter how stressful it would be. <laughs> Along those same lines, do y'all plan on visiting Orlando, Florida? Most that Disney World of is in Orlando. We have children, okay? We I don't think we can get away with not going to Orlando to, to Disney. We were just there. We I mean, we there. stopped through on our way to Miami. We stopped through for a little bit in Disney Springs. Yeah. But we do plan to go back at some Go point. back, yes. Yes, yes, yes. What is the best relationship advice anyone has ever given you? Pray. Yeah. <laughs> Anything that involves God and putting him first and praying together and faith because he is the 
designer of relationships. So yeah. if your relationship with him is not right, you're not going to have a good relationship with anybody else. God, wife, kids. God is first over everything. I really think that's the best relational advice that I've ever received and I live by that and um, it's got me where I am right now. Ditto. This is, this is, this is a delicate one. Uh-oh. What is one do-over you wish you could have from your wedding day? You go first. I have more than one too. So for me, I really wanted, because we had a, a small wedding, y'all, it was small. I don't need a big wedding. Like, cause I don't even, I wouldn't invite that many people. Y'all, yeah. y'all know <laughs> I have social issues. <laughs> I want it. I just want it like to feel like a princess on that day. Like I wanted like the glam, the hair, the makeup, the dress, everything. And then yeah. like the the photos like we we missed out on that for our wedding like yeah good quality professional photos like yeah. those two things that is two of my biggest things that i wish i could change like financially y'all we just weren't there like we were both in college but like i knew i wanted to marry her you know and it was like my mom married us we got married in my mom's house that like, was like this that's probably like the sweetest most endearing thing about it is like his mom literally married yeah, so that's dope. But like, I do, like, I know what weddings mean to a woman. Not being able to give her that, like, sometimes I feel like I cheated her out of that. So, like, I do want to, like, get to a point to where we can, like, renew our vows and, like, have that fairy tale wedding that you want. I'm gonna give you that. Man, I did so many crazy things, y'all. I got her a ring and she wanted a circular diamond and I got a square diamond. I don't know, something was wrong. I don't know what I was thinking about. I love my ring because my husband gave it to me. <laughs> Would I have picked it myself? That doesn't matter. That's not the point, okay? He put a ring on it. That's all that matters. <laughs> But just the, the, the bigger wedding and having um, the photos. But y'all, weddings are expensive. They like, are. When, when we were looking at it, y'all, like I was about to take student loan money and spend about eight bands to get married. Yikes. They are very expensive. And I get that you want to have like those memories and everything. But like you could take that money and go on a vacation. You could take that money and invest in a business. Or like... buy a house. Like we did. <laughs> we live in this house right. because we didn't get married or go. Which is my last thing. Like I wish we would have been able to go on a honeymoon. Like I wanted to go on a honeymoon. Like we got passports and everything y'all. And failed to get them stamped. Because the trip was going to be too high. And we were trying to buy a house. So we decided to take that money and put it into our house instead of go to the Bahamas and have a big wedding. <laughs> we'll have our moment. Yeah, we will. We'll have our day in the sun. I believe it. <laughs> Are you staying in Atlanta for life or would you relocate? I already know his answer, but... I love Atlanta. Like, I've been to multiple places in the United States and to me, nothing is popping like Atlanta. But I hate the weather here in Atlanta, but I would probably always have my home base in Atlanta. Before we had kids, I was all about moving. Like, wherever we got to go to be stable and productive and, yeah. like, I, I don't have a problem leaving. I know it was harder for him because, like, he has family here, but, like, me, I, if it wasn't for his family, I'd be here by myself anyway. So, I mean, before my kids, though, but now that I have kids, I feel like for their stability and, like, we have, like, our yeah, our, our safety our net here. Yeah, our <laughs> village is here. So I would relocate if my village is relocating with me. <laughs> but I mean, I, I like Atlanta. I but I would like to experience living somewhere, somewhere else. Somewhere else. I yeah. I totally agree. I totally agree. Yeah, she's right. I'm, I'm like one of those kids who just like don't like to be like how, when I met her. Like her mom lives in another place. Like I was just like you're just here alone. Like I didn't even want to go to camp without my mom and dad job. <laughs> so stupid, right? How would I be able to live in another state without my mommy and my daddy? <laughs> another touchy one. Mm. Y'all trying to get all up in our business. <laughs> Are you friends with any of your exes? And if so, does that cause a problem in your house? <laughs> you gonna take this? <laughs> I don't have no friends. So no, I'm not friends with none of my exes. I feel like that's a, like why? Yeah. 
Why? Yeah, for real. Y'all, like, I, I'm not either. When I first got with Aries, I had an ex, and we had a dog together, and Aries was just like, you gonna have to give that dog up. Like, I didn't say that. That dog is like you acting like that dog is a kid. Like you can't keep that dog if it's a dog between. I them. didn't say get rid of the dog. I just didn't feel like it's not like joint custody. Like it's not a <laughs> child. Like if she has the dog, then you have to let go of the dog. If you want the dog, you get the dog. But you don't need to be in a relationship with me going to this person's house to visit your dog. Yeah. Like just get your dog or leave the dog. <laughs> so no. <laughs> I do not talk to any females except for the ones that I work with. As you can see by that that interaction, yes, it will be a problem. He can't have no friends but me. I keep trying to tell y'all that. Y'all think I'm playing. I'm his friend. His only friend. Say it. She cried. You're my only friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What would you define as cheating? Man, cheating, cheating is not just sexual contact like cheating is talking to someone if you're at work and you go to lunch with a guy who you feel like is attractive who you would possibly sleep with if you weren't with me that's cheating ditto anything that you doing that you can't tell me about that you hiding from me is cheating if you cheat on your taxes <laughs> if you cheat on your homework <laughs> oh you're cheating God. on me Anything that you would not tell me. It's cheating. It's cheating. I agree. Okay. End of discussion. Do you have date night? Not enough. Yeah, not enough. But date nights are the key to a happy marriage or like trying to sustain a happy marriage. And keep that spark. Yeah. Because I mean, come on, y'all. You sleeping with the same person. You with the same person every day for 50 years. That junk could get old. So you got to do things to keep it new, keep it fresh. This is all fresh. <laughs> hey. It don't get no better. <laughs> oh my God, bro. I can't, I can't take it. I mean, she right though. It would be hard for you to get old, baby. <laughs> this is a great question. What was the deciding factor that made you want to spend the rest of your life with moi? Besides how beautiful I am. I didn't write that, y'all. I'm just, I'm just reading the question. I'm just reading what y'all wrote. I didn't. When, like a year before I met Aries, I had just gotten out of a relationship, like an eight-year relationship. So, like, I wasn't really interested in settling down. I just wanted to sow my royal oats. And I did that. I didn't meet any women while doing that that I wanted to be around. Like, none of them. I didn't want any of them to spend a night. I didn't want to watch a movie with them. I didn't want to cook for them. Well, I'm with Tracy, man. You're right, you're that girl, she's not very smart. Come on, man, you don't fuck her brains. I'm looking for perfection. And then I met you. I wanted to see you every day. It made me feel like high school. Like when you like meet somebody and you're just like, yo, I just want to see you every day. Like you I had a spend... crush on me. Yeah, like I wanted to spend all my time with her. I knew then, like, I would tell her, you just come over, come watch a movie. And she's like, no, you know, I'm. Aunt Flo is in town and I'm like, I don't care. Like, just come over and watch a movie. Like, I just want to be around you. If a man wants to kick it with you when you are tamponing, then that means he really likes you. That's the litmus test, y'all. That's... I mean, just I'm just saying, I used to be a dog, y'all, like for real. Like, I used to be bad. So, like, if I wanted to be around a woman and it didn't have anything to do with sex, that means that I liked you. And we've been rocking ever since. Do you think romantic love between a husband and wife is unconditional? You want me to go first? You want to know what I think? Yeah, I do. Unfortunately, I don't think that any love between two people on earth is unconditional. Like, the only unconditional love comes from God. Yeah. And especially romantic love, like, it is, it's definitely conditional. It's dependent upon if you like the things they do for you, if they make you happy, if they make you feel sexy or attractive. Like, if they're not doing those things, then you'll probably fall out of love with that person. So, now, not to say that you won't still have love for that person, like familial love. Like, I'm always gonna love Greg, but like the romantic part, you gotta work on it because it's conditional. I totally agree. You got to do things. You got to stay in tune with that person. That person has to stay in tune with you because even though men aren't as particular as women, we still want things too. And if you're unable to meet us with those conditions, then we'll be unhappy as well. And we'll probably seek them from other places, just like a woman would do the same thing. So 
Definitely not unconditional. <laughs> Good question. Yeah, great question. I love this question too. Oh my God. What do you see your daughters doing during high school, sports, debate, etc., or after high school, college, careers? Mm. Brave is going to be president. <laughs> Mark my words, okay? My daughter will be president of the United States of America. <laughs> and Wish might very well be vice president. Yes. Wishy is just like, I don't really know what I see her doing, but I do, I can tell y'all this one thing. She'll be with her sister. <laughs> and if somebody messes with her sister, Wish is going to be the one who whoops ass. That's baby D. Has Aries made a large purchase without her telling you and how did you handle it? No, she hasn't. She, we, we do good about that. We're pretty open about our finances. We work together on our finances. So no, I've never had to like see like, a whole bunch of money missing and wondering where. And what would what would you consider a big purchase? Like what amount would the way our bank account is set up? If you spend like eighty five dollars right now, <laughs> <laughs> nah, I would say like Gray, you spent eighty five dollars at CVS. <laughs> nah, but um, you go to buy orange juice and you spend eighty five dollars. <laughs> Like two fifty three hundred. Like if I went to look in the account and that was missing, I would be like, "What?" And then you didn't say nothing. Like when I do things, I tell her. Like I tell her, like my PlayStation Network thing has to be renewed. Like I just feel like we communicate fully about our finances. What's your favorite thing in your house? My PlayStation Five. Y'all didn't even know. I didn't never tell y'all. I ended up getting one. <laughs> so my PS5. My favorite thing in our house. Do you know what it is? Who, me? Yeah, do you know? Yeah, it's our bed. <laughs> I and love not, my bed, y'all. And not because we doing it in it. <laughs> I've just come to this realization. I love my bed. When I get in it, it just feels so amazing. Like all the troubles of the day just leave my body. My mind is clear. Like I can hear God speak to me in my bed. I love my bed. I sleep wonderfully at night. Yeah, it's a comfortable bed. When my kids don't invade it. I still sleep like a baby. <laughs> I love my bed. Do you think couples finances should be joint or separate? I don't knock anybody for doing what you do. You know, marriages work different. What works for you, you do what works for you. But what works for us is joint. Just like we told y'all, anything that you do outside of like complete in the know, like you know what I'm doing, I know what you're doing. You and I T Y. Exactly. <laughs> like, and I think that once you start doing certain things that involve separation, it's like why come together? It's a slippery slope. All joint everything. Like we have a joint bank account, a joint savings account, and we do everything together. We talk about what we're buying. We talk about what we're spending. It's all joint, baby. We all in. Will Mrs. Kirk sing and will Greg rap for your intro? <laughs> Anything for you guys. Y'all know I love singing. And I would definitely rap. Like, if we create, like, honestly, y'all, we don't even have an intro. Like, no, we don't. I'm sorry, y'all. I skip intros. So Is we don't bad? have an intro. Look, if y'all if y'all want me to sing, just ask, okay? <laughs> just ask. I will always sing for you guys. <laughs> What is a relationship deal breaker? Lying. Just lying. And like, because like, I feel like I put my complete trust in you. I trust you. Like, I trust that you're not doing sneaky things behind my back. You're not talking to people behind my back. So I think like, if I found out that all of that was a lie, that's a deal breaker for me. Like, I, I don't feel like I would ever be like, once that trust is broken, I don't think I would ever be able to trust you again. And if I did, it would take a lot of work. But y'all, the way I'm set up, I'm a Scorpio and it's messed up because I'm a grown man, a whole grown man. But I be like vindictive. Like if you do something to me, like I want to do it back to you. So I wouldn't be able to stay. I would have to move on. Anything that is a violation of trust is a deal breaker. Deal breaker. I don't know, though. I don't know. I mean, because I know you and I know for the most part, what you would and wouldn't do. I don't know what you could do that could like make me leave you. I don't think that you would do anything no. worthy of me leaving you. I really don't. I honor my wife, y'all. I made too many mistakes in the past, y'all. 
I learned how to treat a woman based off of treating women wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'll just throw something out there. Um, so placing more value in people outside of our relationship, which you don't do, but just, just go with me. Okay. Like those guys who are like, oh, my mama said, no, we're not doing that. Yeah. You married me. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my home was, no, we're not doing that. Are you sleeping with your homeboy? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing that. So like. If you don't value me, that's a deal breaker. Yeah, definitely. This is like five questions in one. What's your favorite holiday? Christmas! What did you enjoy most about... Let me finish! I just oh, said okay, it's like I'm five sorry. questions okay. in one! Okay. <laughs> What's your favorite holiday? What did you enjoy most about that holiday as a child? And how does that relate to your family traditions today? Did you change anything about that holiday and the way you celebrate today? You gonna go first? Christmas! Duh! Christmas! Christmas! It's just, man, it's just, I can't explain it. Like, just the feeling of that time of year and like being with family and the food and everything. Of course the gifts, but like, it's just a feeling. I don't even know how to explain it. Like, y'all know if you celebrate and love Christmas. It's just a different feeling about that time of year like maybe it's the holy spirit i don't know yeah i do think that christmas should be all of the month of december oh no christmas is november through december <laughs> <laughs> and it spills over into january <laughs> oh my god you did you didn't know this you didn't get the memo yeah i did okay <laughs> so mine would be christmas too yeah we love christmas here. yeah we love christmas Childhood memories, I would just have to say just the anxiousness of like going to sleep and knowing tomorrow is Christmas Day and like waking up to see all of the presents under the tree to see what you got. Like I can remember not being able to sleep. So it's just like those memories make me want to give that back to our kids. Seeing my girls happy, seeing you happy is like everything around that time. So, yeah. Something that we always did for Christmas. We didn't have stocking stuffers like we do now. So... The night before Christmas Eve, we would always open one gift. Yeah. And sometimes that would turn into opening everything. <laughs> and then you wake up Christmas morning and you have all your gifts. But we would open one gift on Christmas Eve. But now we have the stocking stuffers and we open the stockings on Christmas Eve. Yeah. So, and then what the, the tradition, we used to get real Christmas trees when I was a kid. So it's just like, I love the smell of Christmas tree. Like Bath and Body Works has a plug-in called Fresh Balsam and it smells just like real Christmas tree pine needles. So like, I used to go to Christmas tree farms with my mom, with my dad, with my sister. They would be pulling us in like a radio flyer wagon and we would like pick a tree, cut it down, bring it home. So... That is something that we're going to do this year. And during Vlogmas, we're actually going to take y'all with us to go get our Christmas tree, cut it down with our girls, and bring it home. But I've been wanting to do that for the last few years, and we haven't. I've never had a real Christmas tree. She gonna have one this year, y'all. They leave pine needles everywhere, but it smells so good. Mm -hmm. And when the tree falls, it's just a beautiful situation. I'm excited. I would like to have multiple trees. We're gonna have two trees this year, y'all. Two is not multiple. Two is a couple. Oh. I forgot to have multiple trees. <laughs> oh my God. You want to have more than two trees? I would like to have multiple trees. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This, this one is deep. No, for real. What did you learn, positive and or negative, from your parents' relationships to do or not to do in your own relationship? My parents got a divorce when I was like 18 or 19. It's kind of tough. My mom and dad were married for like 23 years and they fell out of love with each other. So I would, I would say that putting God first is the one thing that I got from them and then not making some of the mistakes that my dad made in marriage that would like drive a wedge in between us. I'm conscious about that and try to make sure that I don't do anything like that to compromise my family, you know? Because once you lose it, you can't get it back, man. And you don't want to be older and be like, dang, you know, I wish I could have did this differently when you're in it. And you can, you have the opportunity to make the correct choices to avoid those type of future mistakes, you know? So, yeah. You don't want to live in regret. Never. 
So for me, what I learned, my parents got divorced also. I was very young. So really, I don't really remember my parents ever being together. So like I didn't have that example growing up. Um, and I don't really know why they separated. Like I have an idea in my head. So I won't speculate. But what I think their problem was, was just like a lack of communication. Like somebody probably felt some type of way, had a feeling or a thought about what they wanted and they weren't getting it. And they never talked about it with the other person. Yeah. So like, I'm not going to do that in my marriage. Like if I have something I want to say to Greg, I, for the sake of our marriage, like I got to let him know what's going on so he can fix it. Like I can't be mad at him. For something he's doing and he don't know what he's doing wrong. Exactly. I gotta tell him. And that's why communication is key. Yeah. It's key. So yeah, that was a good question. That was a good question. Y'all took me there. I don't that's not something I <laughs> like to talk about. But for y'all, I'll give you a little bit. Alright, we're almost done. Woo. One more question for me and then one for you. Okay. Let's go. Aries, who is your WCW? <laughs> Please recognize a strong, intelligent, caring woman who impacted your life as a young lady. Wow. So I guess that's two part because they're not the same person, right? Mm. I have a lot of women crushes. Not in a sexual way, but just like women who I look at and I think, man, she's the bomb. Like, yeah. I love her. Yeah. Like, SZA, I love SZA. <laughs> I don't know when this happened. I just looked at her one day on Instagram and I thought, she's beautiful. I love her. <laughs> Ari Lennox. I love her. Of, Rihanna, of course. Like, who doesn't crush Rihanna? Those are women that I just look at and I think they're so, like, be my friend. Yeah. If I want you to be my best friend, then you're my woman crush Wednesday. A woman who impacted my life outside of my mom and Greg's mommy. Man, I would probably say, like, my sixth grade teacher. Miss mm. Chandler. Like, she was just a sweet woman. Like, I don't know what she saw in me, but like. You remember, is that the, you remember her name? Is that the lady who used to give you the her? Yes. Miss Chandler, <laughs> sixth grade, Shadow Rock Elementary. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, she just saw something in me and she just always made me feel special and like seen. Wow. Like, I think that's important for a kid at some point in their school life. You know, in a classroom, there's like 30 other kids. Like, it's very rare for, like, a kid to feel seen sometimes. Yeah. Like, I never really got that. But, like, I feel like she saw me. That's what's up. That's so, what's up. I always remember Miss Chandler. Lastly, Greg, who is your man crush Monday? <laughs> <laughs> um, First of all, I don't have a man crush. Okay, we won't say it's a crush. We'll just say, like, a, a man who you admire or respect or... Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So I, I would say there's like three guys who, who come to mind right off the rip of who like I admire for how they are as a husband. And I only see what I can see from the media, but how these guys carry the um carry themselves. Stephen Curry, John Legend, and Russell Wilson. They all love God. Mm -hmm. They all seem like they value and cherish their wife and their family. And then they're like stand-up guys. Like you don't hear anything about them like partying and having people sign NDAs. And you know, you don't really like I you hear about Stephen Curry being on the road and like he doesn't leave out of his hotel room. Like I think that's one way that he's able to stay faithful to Aisha Curry. Because he doesn't put himself in situations that would lead to him falling short of being the upstanding man that he is. So those three guys right there, not crushing on them or anything, but I will say that I see them from afar and I admire how they move as a man. That's based on like your, your morals and your, you know. But who's a guy who you look at and you think, man, he's fly. Like, I want to look like that. Or I... Um, okay, so I would probably, I would probably say like, well, he's, he's getting a little old now, but Will Smith, man. Like Will a, Smith? Will Smith and Diddy. Like, Will Smith and Diddy. Okay, Diddy, Will Smith. I mean, he's handsome, but he's not like... I mean, that's that's you, though. But, man, Mike Lowry and Bad Boys. Okay, but that's a character. That's not Will Smith. That's a character. <laughs> <laughs> so, say Mike, Mike Lowry. Yeah, say Mike. Mike Lowry. Diddy, though. Like, I, <laughs> I feel like Diddy is the man to me. Like, he's a Scorpio like me. He's older. He He's a handsome guy. He carries himself well. He's in shape. He, his love life is just a mess. <laughs> <laughs> 
But Diddy, man, that's that's one person who I would look at and be like, if and I then could... he has a great business mind. Exactly, exactly, like me. <laughs> well, not like me, but because I'm broke. <laughs> That's temporary, boo. So, y'all, everybody who participated in this Q&A, we love y'all, man. Y'all dropped some great questions. Thank you, for real. Like, y'all made, I feel like y'all made this an interesting, fun experience. Seriously, like, we hope you enjoy this video. I mean, it's probably going to be kind of long. <laughs> but... The it's stuff that you wanted to know, so you should watch all of it. All of it. And then it was, I mean, these questions were so good. Like, we really got to have some good, deep conversations. So, we appreciate y'all. That's why y'all Good Vibe Nation. And we love y'all. There's a part two to this Q&A. We're going to drop it. But let me get 100 likes on this video. Can we get to 100 likes? I don't think we've ever had 100 likes. And it's not a lot. No, it's I don't think lot. so. 100 likes on That's this video. That's reasonable. Y'all can do it. I believe in you. You're smart. You're capable. You're loyal. Okay? <laughs> you got this. You can do it. <laughs> but y'all, we get 100 likes on this first Q&A. We'll drop the second part. The second part got a spin to it. We asked y'all some questions. And y'all gave us some beautiful answers. And we would like to share them back with Good Vibe Nation. So... <laughs> Subscribe for the good vibe. Always a good vibe. <laughs> and share this video, y'all. And we'll see y'all on the next one. We are a part of the Good Vibe Nation.